Hi, I'm Jackie Tranquita, and we're here at New York's Institute of Culinary Education for the first ever Cabin Pressure Cook-Off. The rules are simple. Four chefs, three challenges. In each round, one chef will be named the winner, but one chef will be eliminated. The chef who wins the final challenge will join Delta's elite culinary team. So, let's meet our chefs. From Atlanta, we have Linton Hopkins, executive chef at Restaurant Eugene. Hugh Atchison, chef and partner of Atlanta's Empire State South. Kelly English of Restaurant Iris. And George Mendez of New York's Aldea. Welcome, chefs. Thank you. Now, you're all renowned on the ground, but designing meals to be served at 30,000 feet has a whole new set of challenges. So, for challenge number one, take your greatest strength, your signature dish, and reimagine it as an in-flight appetizer. You have 45 minute chefs. You're now free to move about the kitchen. Open up a can of coconut milk, what's that for? That is for our Harissa Cafe Olay we're making. A little North African spice. It's got a little coriander, some cumin, some garlic, some pasilla chili. Here's what I want to cook for an airline. It's a challenge. It's a whole new set of people to cook for. It's people that I wouldn't necessarily get to, to cook for in Memphis. I, I like to cook for as many people as I can. I'm looking at the left and right, and there are three amazing chefs next to me. My mantra is focused organization, flavor, and, and getting stuff on the plate and, and racing against the clock. I like winning. <laughs> My game is to just cook what I cook and not really think about the other people. It's like playing golf. You don't play the people you're playing, you play the course. What do I see being poured into this? All right, so we have a freshly squeezed orange juice, a little Georgia sorghum. We're gonna reduce this down to a glaze. With the cooking underway, let's meet our judges. Chef Michelle Bernstein, a James Beard Award winner and member of Delta's culinary team. Andrea Robinson, she's one of only 18 women in the world to hold the title of Master Sommelier. And she actually personally selects every wine served on Delta Business Elite Flights. David Swinghammer, Chief Development Officer of the famed Shake Shack and Senior Partner at the Union Square Hospitality Group. And Christina Gerdovich, publisher of Food & Wine, welcome. Michelle, what are some of the challenges that the chefs face preparing meals for in-flight service? The 30% loss of your palate, of taste, because you're up in the high altitude. You kind of lose your senses somewhat. Everything has to taste a little bit more intense. How's it coming along? Awesome. What is that beautiful fish you're cutting up? This is a little bit of yellow jack from the Gulf of Mexico. Do you kind of go to the market and let the fish of the day inspire you? I go to market and let all ingredients inspire me. I, I don't think that uh, we should tell the food what it's going to be. I think we should let the ingredients tell us. Ooh, what are you grilling up over here? Some skirt steak, and then I got some green papaya that I'm going to shave, and we're going to make a sort of Vietnamese-inspired little salad. Now, that's an interesting little tool he's using to turn those. Oh, tweezers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is the new tool. Yeah. That's all we use anymore, especially the youngsters. Are those peaches? <gasps> Georgia peaches. He's playing the hometown game. Yeah. <laughs> he is Mr. Georgia. Yeah. Oh, bacon. Yeah, it's uh, unfair. It is unfair. I feel like that's a cheat ingredient. You always win with bacon. Well, this is a competition, right? George has really good colors. Aren't they? Yeah. The bright yellows and the reds. Almost very Latin, I would say. How did this become the it's, George Mendes it's, dish? It's a take on a, it's another interpretation of the duck rice that we serve at Aldea. It's going to be reinvented as an appetizer with chicken. How come you decided to do that? Um, I think chicken's going to be much more readily available in an airplane, for one. Yes. And who doesn't like chicken? Can you smell the shrimp? I they do. smell yeah. delicious. Yes. I wonder if they're from the Gulf. They, they smell like they are. All right, chefs, you have about 15 minutes. Linton's is really coming together. Wow. George, OK, that's clearly some sort of a breast on is that a chicken. And he's making like a croquette, like a crispy risotto. There was a little chorizo there, too. The rice has such a beautiful color. Yeah. So we're going to cool it down, and then we're going to roll them up into little balls or okay. patties and fry them. All right, chefs, time is winding down. You have 10 minutes. now. As things wrap up, you have to start thinking about plating. Right. And obviously, this poses a new challenge because the plates are obviously much smaller on airplanes. Have you thought about that yet? I have. And? We're just going to shrink it a little bit. <laughs> the plates were small. 
Yeah, definitely didn't give much room to, to show off what we're trying to do. Does anybody on this plane have a peanut allergy? Oh. No. All right, chefs, you have just over a minute. I'm getting nervous. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little I'm worried for George. All right, 10 seconds. Chefs, you have five, four, three, two, one. Hands in the air. <laughs> yeah, all right. Q, you're up first. Okay, so this is a cold beef salad with radishes and cucumber, shaved peanut on top, and a really simple shoyu and fish sauce vinaigrette. Well, you've got sweet, Nothing. you've got tangy and crunchy, and the sweet of the papaya really t kind of tones down the chili pepper heat, so you yeah. get a nice yin and yang with that. Which is one of my favorite flavors of the world is like really ripe mango and stuff with, with really hot cayenne pepper yeah. and just like the balance on it. Yeah. I just want more of these carrots. These are yeah, amazing. Yeah, they're, they're fun. Incredible. Incredible. They're fun. Thanks, you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hello, George. So basically what I did is a roasted chicken slash confit chicken salad. I made like little rustic rice balls that are kind of mixed in with chicken thigh meat. And then there's some uh, fresh orange puree. These crunchy bits, is this part of the confit or is that something else? That's crispy chicken skin. Ah, fabulous. This is so interesting. It just keeps growing. The orange is a great ad additive to this Definitely. dish. It just brightens it up beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank you. How are y'all doing? Hi, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. So what I made today is what I think of when I think of today's salad. We have a peeled tomato salad, some grilled yellowtail jack, which is one of my favorite fish, some gulf shrimp, and then in the coffee press, we have some cumin, some coriander, some toasted shrimp shells. I want to see you on every flight pouring the sauce. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. And it's beautiful too, the colors and the presentation. I can't figure out what yeah. the best bite is here. The yeah. shrimp with the tomatoes, the fish with the tomatoes. Christine, yeah. if you had a mouth as big as mine, you could probably get it all in there. <laughs> okay. This is beautiful. Thanks, Chef. Well, thank you all for having me. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Chef. What you have here is all of Georgia on a plate. So we have Vidalia onions. You have Georgia peaches, these are July princes, cured smoked bacon, toasted pecans. Pecans actually come from the oldest organic grove of pecan trees in the state. And one thing about your cooking is that it looks so simple, but it's so incredibly complicated and complex. Yeah, I can't get over the char of the onion with the smokiness of the bacon. Well, thanks, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Chef. So it's great. Speech sure. makes delicious. I think we should talk about Hugh. He came up first. Mm -hmm. Really good flavors. It was very fresh. I couldn't stop eating it. I love the pickling. I thought that was excellent. The carrots really liked the way that worked with the meat. For me, I wanted each element to marry just a little better. That doesn't mean it wasn't a great dish, but there was just something about the experience of it where I felt like I was just eating several different things. George brought us a really complex, very interesting dish. For me, I actually, I felt like the orange was almost a little too much, but then I couldn't help but think about what would this be like on a plane, and it would be great on the plane because you've talked about the taste bud, so the flavor was so good. If I closed my eyes, I would know that that was George. That just really captured his personality and his background and all the culture was really on that plate and I love that. Let's talk about Kelly because that golf shrimp, that broth mm -hmm. is just really kind of calling me. The Harissa Cafe Ole. Oh. Yeah. In the press pot. I mean. <laughs> Coconut cumin. And there were at least three different perfect bites oh. in that one dish. At least. So Linton, everything has a reason. It to does. be there. It married so well, each item belonged on that plate. Starting with the presentation, you know, that was the one that we could see the furthest away. Right. And then when it came up close, it was literally a work of art. Yeah. And they all have a story and a source, and he'll tell you the name and the farm, how long the grove's been planted, <laughs> and every single ingredient. We have four great chefs, four great dishes. So, um, yeah, this is the hard part. I hate this, but we definitely, um, I think we've. I think we are there, right? Got it. I, I, yeah. I think we have our answer. Hello, chefs. This was a very difficult decision as all of these dishes really represented you and your personality. So it's hard to pick a winner. One did stand out as best. The winner of the first round. Is Linton. Mm. Thank you. Sadly, that means that one of you three have been cut. Shh. 
Chef Hugh, I'm sorry, but you're on the next flight home. Hugh, the truth is your dish was the most approachable, the easiest to eat. The only difference is you didn't show as much of your personality as the other chefs did. I was shocked that Hugh went home. I think the world of Hugh. And, um, you know, somebody's got to go, though. I get that. I think that the four dishes up there were all really good food, mine included. And I thought uh, mine had freshness and it's the way I like to eat. In a circumstance like this, it's three friends who I like a lot. They're all amazingly gifted chefs who really brought their game and did really well. So they should be proud. Hugh is going home, but Linton, Kelly, and George are one step closer to a spot on Delta's culinary team. Be sure to stay tuned as the competition continues here at the Institute of Culinary Education. On the next cabin pressure cook-off. 15 minutes left, chefs. One of you did rise to the top, and the winner of the second round is...